As soon as I saw this, I was blown away by the capabilities that this AI tool will have for researchers. What am I talking about? Illicit. It is genuinely a digital research assistant for researchers across the world. It actually uses those GPT-3 like language models like we are familiar with with ChatGPT to help you to answer questions that you can type into Illicit for research purposes. And what makes it different to Google Scholar or even ChatGPT itself is that it actually provides a summary of those findings in a little table and is very easy for you to navigate. And what blew my mind genuinely it is that when you give it a question, it finds sources through research papers, not the internet, through actual research papers and it collates what you can find to your query, compiles it together in terms of the summary of those findings from those like, latest eight research papers, and then it gives you that summary of findings. Just, just. So let's add a little bit more context. You give it a research question, so related to your research or your PhD, something that you need to look into. Now normally you would find papers from Google Scholar, PubMed and everything else. You look at all of these papers, find similarities and differences, and then you collate your summary. Whereas Illicit, as you can see in the graphic here, you give it a research question. It then goes away and finds eight research papers, re-ranks them accordingly, and then sends you those re-ranked top papers. Then it uses all sorts of computer jiggery that I have no idea how it works. I'm not gonna attempt to explain it to you, I'm sure there are computer engineers and videos on this, if you can find them, I'll link them down below. But it looks at all of those eight papers, finds the key information from all of them, and then collates it together. Then finds critiques, which is amazing, and then sends all of that information back to you in that query. So you can imagine the permutations, capabilities, and potential this will have for researchers. Like, just put it into perspective. The ability to ask a research question to an AI model that will find research answers through research papers for you give you all the findings in a probably split second maybe or a couple of seconds the speed of the information is remarkable but enough of me babbling let me actually show you how Elisa works so as you can see we've got Elisa open right now we're gonna give it some questions different research things that i'm quite interested in anyway and we can see what it can produce so one thing that I am interested in, I did type it, but I wanted to type it again because of the video cut. But what is the impact of cold showers on muscle growth? So, I mean, because I've been going to the gym a lot recently, speaking to my gym partner, we were like, we used to do a lot of cold showers, but we want to see the research. He yells me because he knows I'm a researcher. Find the research. So I was like, okay, good chance to use illicit. Let's find out. So it's loading. That was quite quick. I think it was a bit quicker because I did search it just before this. So I think maybe a couple of seconds. But you can only see those eight papers I'm referring to like that. And here's the key part, which I'm very interested in, which is that little summary. So it's looking at these eight papers and trying to basically give you a concise summary about what these overall papers may show. So these papers may suggest that cold water immersion may not be effective in promoting muscle growth, which is generally the consensus. We're stating these 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 papers, which is phenomenal, although these papers are quite old, except for the 2015 one. But you can see in a matter of seconds, you can ask a question related to a chapter in your thesis or an experiment, you know, does X, Y, and Z experiment, or is it influential for this type of research? Or if I change this in my experiment, what's happening but it's more i think it's more overview research than in particular ones so let's see so i'm interested to see that next one is um something i'm actually quite fascinated in is what are the new monoclonal antibodies to treat severe asthma so i haven't searched this before so you can see it's a little bit longer but I'm talking one second to four seconds. Like seriously, it's that rapid. And you can see it's generating the paragraph here. So what, 10, 12 seconds? If you're looking at speed, if you wanted to. Again, these papers suggest that there are new monoclonal antibodies to treat severe asthma, which is apparent. And if you're looking, even looking at these papers, you know, we've got omalizumab, which we know, rilizumab, which is quite um, newish in the area. This is from the second postdoc that I did. So an area I'm still, I'm still very interested in. But again, I can I haven't even looked at the capability. Look, I just clicked on the paper, gives me the whole insight, which is phenomenal. 
and then, like the, again this is fresh i haven't even clicked on these papers even before this i found about this today and i really wanted to make a video literally it um i'm looking if you're a phd student now this is huge now nah, i'll be honest um wow you can just you can just read it and it's so quick still just and then one last one in terms of like a live demo um what is the best fruit in terms of antioxidant capability I'm trying to spell lives daunting sometimes but again loading doesn't take too long a little bit longer this time but if you while you're waiting if you do want to subscribe to the channel feel free while we're waiting for it to load um it really helped me out we we're close to 1k been nice to hit that mark um so i really appreciate it oh, while we're waiting and thank you for those who have been watching um for the past two years which has been amazing but anyway back to this again those eight um papers some are fairly old nothing like super new so that's of, of interest you can click show more but again that's the that paragraph we've done about that strawberry is one of the best fruits in terms of antioxidant capabilities highest aurac rating interesting because we know that um acai berries um berries generally do have the kind of the biggest aurac rating um but let's just click show more um which is i'm sure you'll find some maybe new papers uh of interest 2004 10 14 5 17 so i believe um we're going to come back to it in later on in the video but it's based on kind of a 2019 language model so i don't think and i'll when i edit the video i'll see but i don't think it's going to look at brand new papers in the past couple of years this is this is the beta by the way um so but in terms of capabilities so that was a live demo of the beta. This is the only beta that's released. And the reason why they've done that, which is quite small, is that even though it's in its infancy, they want user to use it and then get feedback so they can iterate it quicker. What does this mean for researchers? So I mentioned in an earlier video of mine about ChatGPT and writing your thesis, which is linked down below and I'll put it here. The notion of automated workflows to increase the start and the end of a research kind of Time frame. So what I mean by this in short, you need to research in terms of see what's out there in your field, find what's the latest trends, what's good, bad, what are the gaps in the knowledge. Then you do the research and then you share it. And I mentioned that AI can help the start, a little bit of the middle, but the end as well. So being able to find those papers quicker, like I've just shown with this piece of software, even through ChatGPT perhaps, but this is more dedicated to finding actual papers. And then when you want to share that research out there, you can use AI to help you to get it to the right people. And this is great for research because it's sourcing actual papers, not the website or a link on Google, for example, which is amazing. So it's increasing that workflow and minimizing the, the grunt work. When you can just think of a question, ask Elicit, you get those papers you need, and then you can do your own creation but it speeds up that thing that would have taken maybe a couple of hours. And second thing in terms of what does it mean for researchers is that it helps you to be to do quicker things in terms of other parts of your research. Now, if you're writing your thesis and you need to, you know, get some more research papers in that area, you can ask Elicit. If you're kind of correcting uh, your comments from a paper that you published and you got feedback back, and they're saying that, you know, we need to find some other research to corroborate this or back up this, you can use Elicit. You know, there are so many, if you're writing a report or if you, you know, trying to do a presentation and you find some references quick and somebody asks you a question and you want to go away and have a look, Elisa might help you just to get the ball rolling quicker. And that's how I see Elisa in this early stages and just me just testing it today. Just kind of my first impressions, like, you know, the tech YouTubers do first impressions of iPhone 13. This is my first impression of a research software, you know, it's going to get millions of views now, you know. Never know, but the notion is that you actually are able to initiate thought, action, get information quicker, and then you can carry on. Whereas with a, had that question, spend a couple of hours finding find papers, then look at some summary findings, and then you can kind of get ahead. This shortens that, as I mentioned earlier. So it's then it's going to be quite a good software to use for researchers around the world. But what else does it mean for researchers? Basically, it saves time. It just saves time, so then you can do stuff that AI can't help with running your experiments, giving your presentation, designing stuff. You don't have to worry because you've now saved a little bit of time finding these papers and ideas, and then you can just go and do the stuff you need to do. So that's why I see AI as, there's another video I'll link in the video description by the time you probably watch this, in terms of what I see AI as 
in terms of helping researchers. But one thing I didn't mention in the video that I want to mention now is, I found this on LinkedIn by the way, um, Zaid Khan, I'll try and source his name for memory, I saw this earlier. And what he said is that AI won't replace us, those people who use AI won't replace us. And I thought that's a beautiful depiction of this whole AI revolution where AI itself may not replace us, but those who are actively using AI softwares will replace those who are not. So it's useful to get ahead and understand this. But naturally, there are concerns, as with anything. My main concern is that this model, this illicit model using GP33 software, and I don't know what that bit, what I see is that it's only going to be as good as the research papers they can find. And that's still always a central problem within research is finding good quality papers and how good are they? You know, I don't know yet what sources of kind of um, papers Elicit is finding. You know, how good is the journal? How good is the research itself? You know, it, I presume it's gonna be peer reviewed, but how good is the quality of the research in there? That's a whole different conversation to have. But again, it's only gonna be as good as the research papers they can find. And in this beta, I don't believe it's gonna be looking at new research in a couple of years. And as we know as researchers, research does change even year by year, even month by month in, in some departments and, and fields of research. So once I, be I believe it gets up and running and it's got like a proper fully equipped software, it can look at things more up to date, it's going to be more handy. But in terms of capabilities, yeah, it's only going to be as good as the research papers it can find. Now, when I actually looked at the website and I'll link it down below, you can also see here, Elicit themselves say it's, on it's only really good at certain questions over others. It can do a lot, but some questions are a little bit more than others and it said that they focused on empirical research in terms of the systematic review process. So those type of questions, those type of research, it's going to be a little bit better at than others. So that's something to bear in mind. So lastly, in terms of concerns, Elicit themselves say that it's only 80-90% accurate, which is a lot, but not as accurate as they would like to, which is why they released this beta early so you can get user feedback to iterate it and improve it. In terms of the language model, you know, like what you give it is also how it's going to interpret that and how well it interprets your question. Same like chat GP3 in terms of those questions, the better you give the question, the better answer you're going to get in terms of how you word it and what you say. So that same applies to something like Elicit because it uses that GP3 model. Again, I don't know what that means entirely, but I understand it from that's how it works. So we have to actually give it detailed questions so we can get type of answer you have. So I definitely urge you to check out Elicit just to have a play around, see what answers it gives you based on your research. Um, let me know what you think in the comment section down below if you do try it. You can also find me on, on Instagram, amir.phd here. And if you are interested in what I mentioned about ChatGP3 and thesis in terms of can ChatGP3 help you write your thesis generally, it's actually one of my best videos on the channel so far, which is amazing. It is here and the, the whole overview of AI and research in terms of that video is in the video description down below. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this kind of first impressions of a research software. And I should hopefully see you in the next one. Take care.